Hey, hey, what are you doing in here? I said don't come in here when we're recording. You know where the pussy's at, sir? <laughs> Remember David Nolan? We went to MIT together. Hell of a bowler and cocked like a stallion. But he had lust for one woman, Ayn Rand. Oh, Nolan? I remember. Besides jerking off the anthem? Oh, um, he was big into politics. Made a youth group at MIT. Called it MIT Students for Goldwater. Didn't really help Goldwater win very much in the long run. But that's because. Probably because Goldwater had a shit fetish. No one really knew about it then, but it's true. Google it. <laughs> he graduated MIT with a degree in political science. So he was jobless. <coughs> he ran around with his homies in the Young Americans for Freedom, which was a loosely libertarian and conservative group. It's sort of like today's libertarians but mixed with Steven Crowder jerking off to a trans person crying. He was a masterful engineer. He crafted the Nolan Compass, a modern Rosetta Stone, capable of telling right from wrong and liberal from fascist, and morphed our political spectrum from a right-left divide to a right-left libertarian and authoritarian divide. Yeah, all right, let's take this bad boy. Speech assembly, precedent, and prosperity rights. Jesus Christ. Government should not restrict speech, press, media, the rights of who don't, don't, who don't violate other people's rights must be respected and protected at all times. Exercise in the media domain should be extremely limited, and, you, and, you, and its use should be private property and private rights should be protected at all times. Yeah, sure. Speech, assembly, press, internet should be free, except when it comes to protecting its tear. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. If, if they get progressively worse, I'm going with this one. No need to read them. Unless government should... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Speech, the internet should be... Okay, fuck you. Um, the Second Amendment only applies to militias such as the, as the National Guard. 
and thus there is not specific avoid by um okay the second amendment is clearly bear uh go mm. so militias everybody should have a gun uh gun control is essential in most let me see if we do and hopefully it'll make gun violence in country in general i support the right to bear arms however it's prudent to have guns to government regulate on view restriction requirement and other regulations and to ensure mental instability people cannot get guns and go on shooting rampages yeah that seems uh that seems uh that seems right gay rights should be supported by passing laws which protect gay marriage including civil statute alternatives to gay marriage all government benefits that homosexual couples and heterosexual couples enjoy should be granted to gay ones homosexuality is an abomination that the government should define yeah yeah I'm gonna definitely along the lines of that one foreign policy peace commerce and honest friendship with all nations okay so that's that one's cute the role of government is to administer direct and control the nation foreign policy and use of military force should always be primarily focused in the order of importance on defending the nation from external threats ensuring internal threats are neutralized and promoting a stable world society well, that sounds fine <laughs> america should play an active role in world affairs i don't know about that i mean that's a little more than this i, I would say i'm not this that's like let's all have gay sex Trump and Putin having gay sex. This is like Trump and Putin having gay sex when it's necessary. And this is Trump and Putin not having gay sex at all. And that's Trump and Putin beating each other to death with a wooden spoon. So I'm, I'm thinking definitely this one. There should be no national ID cards. Ooh, ID cards. That's a good one. This is a good question. There should be no national ID cards. The insurance of required national energy control David and in this kind and all privacy in this country I don't know if it's privacy we need a national ID card no national ID card should be permitted but greatly restricted okay I'm not at all concerned about having a national ID card only the guilty need to worry okay a cringe definitely go with that one there's no need um, corporate welfare mm-hmm. the government has <laughs> hanging out all right the government has a significant role in regulating the market and should regulate corporations and state state uh, corp if necessary I don't know probably what the fuck does that mean and corporate welfare no government hand out to business don't know about that government involvement is necessary where private industry can't do the job by itself <laughs> As an example, agricultural subsidies should continue to support small farmers. Okay. Corporate welfare should be eliminated for big business, but the social safety net for individuals should be banned. Um, okay. Epic. That is so freaking cool and epic. Um, yeah, government involvement is necessary when private interest industry can't do the job itself. Yeah, that sounds about right trade trade in big money trade money and money trade that isn't free fair trade practices should be enforced and to ensure free to ensure free trade while maintaining reasonably response uh, uh, the feds <laughs> fucking so I'm mentally crippled right now the feds policies should be revised to help the poor <laughs> rather than the rich right okay the government should involve itself in the regulation <laughs> I'm having a fucking collapse <sighs> okay let's regain composure the government should involve itself in the regulation of trade as needed to ensure a healthy economy at all times that's reasonable but this one also sounded reasonable as well. And government barriers to international free trade, their regulations, selective interest groups, and industry captains at the expense of everyone else. We must move away from the inflammatory 
approach of the Federal Reserve by readopting hard money approach to the Federal Reserve system. Is that the gold standard? I think they're talking about. I don't know. I'm fucking out of my mind right now. Trade should be free in general, but it should be it should be controlled as needed to ensure that our borders are protected against outside threats. Monetary policy. The Fed have generally been good for our economy. Uh, hard money can't keep up with the modern economy. That's true. Uh, trade. That isn't. I don't know. They all sounded reasonable to me. Maybe I'm just fucking bloated. Maybe I'm just fucking brain, brain itch. My brain itch. Trade should be free in general. I'd say that sounds good. <laughs> Social security. <laughs> Social security, why does that word sound funny? Social security should be maintained by the government as is for current and near retirees while offering young workers the choice to invest some of their retirement money in the private market from government maintained and managed plans. The government should create incentives for private retirement planning. The government should discourage taking social security. Early payroll taxes should not be necessary, okay? Uh, I'd say more than that. Social Security is a viable Social Security net should be properly funded and protected at all times. If necessary, make big bid and pay. Okay. The government has an obligation to provide for its citizens. Alright. Uh, the disabled and who are retarded. Social Security is the proper expression of government control. But as a program, such as let the people control their own retirement. Uh, cringe. This one sounded fine. Government regulation of healthcare is the main cause of healthcare industry upward spiraling cost. That's not exact, that's kind of weird. FDA, the EPA, Medicare, and a host of other bureaucracies have created mountains of regulations that lead to the deaths of thousands and even millions of people. Okay. <laughs> healthcare costs should primarily are spiraling due to lawsuits. We need to place caps on these suits. No, it sounds cringe. We need universal health insurance to ensure all Americans are yeah, that sounds good. Uh, uh, private enterprise has failed to deliver satisfactory health care government. Role is clear, fix the problem, I would say um, this one sounded good to me that one sounds great taxes there should be no limits to the government fuck <laughs> my brain is no All right, I'm gonna try to read this slowly there should be no limits placed on the ability of government to raise sufficient revenue that's kind of gay cut taxes and government spending by 50% or more I don't know about that one chief Budget should be balanced and fully funded at all times. Yeah, that sounds about right. We should be emphasizing that a good government can do help without getting all wrapped up in, in the costs involved by spreading the load. I know what that's like. Such good can be spread out fairly and evenly. Progressive taxation helps to ensure that the rich do, don't live at the expense of the poor. However, we want to make sure we don't place too much burden on the middle class. That sounds good. That sounds like a classic centrist centrist pick. Find out where you lie in the Nolan chart. I sure can. I sure can. <laughs> Nineteen seventy one. That's when it got wacky. That's when it got wacky and wild, my main man. That's when Nolan created the Libertarian Party. An economical right, but socially left party that made the world a bit more epic. They started to conduct. They started to conduct quickly, and formed their national convention, picking John Hospers 
to hit the White House lawn, baby. John Ospers, who is he? Nobody fucking knows. What a wild guy, huh? That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's pretty wacky. David Nolan was a cool guy. The first Libertarian Party convention went quite well. They, they elected John Hospers for the White House. Would he make it there? No! Would he make it close? Maybe. Let's see. Let's find out about John Hospers. The first libertarian candidate to run for president was John Hospers. In 1917, he was an American philosopher who was most interested in objectivism, an ideology of his once friend, Ayn Rand. They broke their friendship after he criticized one of her books negatively. Now, John Hospers picked Tony Nathan. <laughs> that, it's a woman. I was going to say guy, it's a female, as his vice presidential pick who was a TV and radio producer, much like the feet-loving Dan Schneider. Hospers was running under a new party, which was only able to gain ballot access in two states, Washington and Colorado. And in his race, he only got 3,674 votes. Despite the low number of votes, they did receive an electoral vote from Roger McBride, who voted for the Libertarians as a protest to the Republicans, making the first Libertarian run the most successful run electorally. <laughs> Gamers. Roger McBride, the man behind the Faithless Elector, the man behind the slaughter, was a lawyer from Vermont who decided, after betraying the Republicans in 72, he would run under the Libertarian ticket. But now, the Libertarian Party was trying to pick up some speed, like a meth addict with a back problem. Under McBride, the party gained ballot access in 32 states and skyrocketed their votes from 3,000 to 200,000. Ed Clark is an American lawyer who ran for governor of California in 1978, which he ran on making sure Proposition 13 passed, which was an abolishment of property tax. Am I right, gamers? I don't even pay any of my I don't pay sales tax. He also fought to make sure... Does that say penis? Penis? No. Proposition 6 did not pass, which would ban gays from working government jobs, which frankly, uh, I mean, um, fuck, ah, uh, shit, uh, but <laughs> now it was, now it's 1980, and he's there for the victory royale, right, he came in, he comes in swinging, and he picked his boy David Cock, great name, and he's like, okay, I'm running for president now, all right, and we're going to run on ending the arms race with the Soviet Union. That's good, right? And then, you know, he gets a fucking W in that victory royale because he gets a million votes, which is which is uh which would be a record until uh until 2016. He also hated black people. Money involved. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it's it's more than just starting to happen with the drug war. I think that the judiciary and lots of police have already been corrupted. I've seen lots of things of police selling uh, drugs right out of the police cars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is your absolute it right. Is, it is absolutely a very pressing problem. It, it is a pressing problem. Legalization is the answer. And uh, you can do legalization in any number of ways, mm -hmm. but probably a Parkway step would be somewhat like they legalized alcohol, that you license people to 
mm -hmm. uh, distribute it, you license drugstores to do it, you keep it away from minors, and you use some of the revenues to aid the people who have drugs and Right, rehabilitate, drugs. medical, all of that. Well, that's my file drawer empty, but the story does not end there, and I know just the man who can help continue it. Follow me. Get in my, get in my lab. Hmm. We need to go find Barack Obama. Mr. Obama, we need the information now. Now, 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 girl. <laughs> now. Okay, booting up files in my dumb liberal robo brain. M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M files found. Oh no, you're not going to like this. Oh shit, oh fuck, it's run, Paul, run, Paul, Paul, run, oh fuck, no fuck shit. Thank you, Mr. Obama. I will see you in your Kenyan mansion where you were born and where you have lived for your entire life in a few minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, thanks. You have two daughters, you have many granddaughters. If one of them was raped, and I, I accept it's a very unlikely thing to happen, but if they were, would you honestly look at them in the eye and say they had to have that child if they were impregnated? Now, if, if it's an honest rape, uh, that individual should go immediately to the emergency room. I would give them uh, a shot of estrogen. Or give so you, them, you would allow them to abort the baby? Yeah, well, it is absolutely in limbo because an hour after, after intercourse or a day afterwards, there is no legal or medical uh, you know, problem. If you talk about somebody coming in and they say, well, I was raped and I'm seven months pregnant and I don't want to have anything to do with it, it's a little bit different story. But somebody arriving in an emergency room say, I have just been raped and uh, there's, there's no chemical, there's no medical, and there's no legal uh, so evidence of a pregnancy. So life doesn't begin at conception? Life does begin at conception, but... Uh, well, then you'd be taking a life. Ron Paul is the demon under my bed, my lover, my sweet baby boy. He's the man I see when I close my eyes, and sadly when I open them. Ron Paul was a pussy doctor. He loves pussy so much he became a doctor and my kind of man. Ron Paul served under in the House under the Republican Party many times. He was uh, war on drugs. He was anti-war on drugs. So. As all the cool kids say, that's pretty based. But he started his libertarian campaign in 1987, after leaving the Republican Party. He didn't like how Reagan was handling the, uh, the federal budget. <laughs> Am I right, liberals? Ron Paul was, uh, was, uh, was very, um, was, was very, uh, aggressive with his campaign. One media man said it was, uh, a kamikaze campaign, just throwing shit everywhere and hoping it lands. Um, his final rally in Salt Lake City, which is the perfect place uh, if you want to have multiple wives, but not the perfect place if you want to win the presidency if you're a libertarian. Um, he said he wouldn't be surprised if they got 20% of the vote in Utah. He foolishly thought that because he ended up receiving 1.16%, which is a lot less than that, if you could tell. But he did receive 
ballot access in 46 states and Washington, D.C., and 4, 430,000 votes in total. After that, he returned to the Republican Party to experience much more failure and cry and piss his pants, and then made his son do the same thing. I'm Harry Brown, libertarian candidate for president. So tell us, why are you running for president? Well, it's obvious that no Democrat or Republican is going to stop the relentless growth of government. No one but a libertarian is going to reduce government to its constitutional limits, reduce your taxes dramatically, enable you to live as a free American. But one of the problems with government is that the people who are making all the decisions are making decisions with your money, not with their money. So naturally, they feel no sense of responsibility as we know it because not one of them will suffer no matter how many people die as a result of the bill that they pass. If I'm elected president on my first day in office, I will give an unconditional pardon to every federal prisoner who was convicted of a nonviolent drug offense. I will empty the federal prisons of the people who are no threat to anyone and make room for the violent thugs who are terrorizing our streets. As a matter of fact, whenever you try to impose morality by government, what you wind up doing is making moral decisions the province of politicians. And I don't know about you, but I do not consider Newt Gingrich, Jesse Helms, Teddy Kennedy, Richard Gephardt, Bob Dole, Bill Clinton as my moral superiors and people who can teach me something about how to live. The problem is not the abuse of power, it's the power to abuse. If government is big and government can reward its friends and punish its enemies, then everybody's going to be showering money on it, trying to get on the good side of government rather than the bad side. But if government doesn't have that power, if the politicians can't do anything to tamper with your life, then uh, people are going to be uninterested in slipping money under the table to politicians. At the top of your website, you have, I want you to be free. What do you mean by that? I mean, that, that's one of those big phrases that <laughs> hardly anybody could be opposed to, but what does it mean to you? Well, it's interesting. You're absolutely right. Hardly anybody could be opposed to it, and yet no Republican or Democrat is offering it to you. I want you to be free to live your life as you want to live it, not as Al Gore or George Bush thinks is best for you. I want you to be free to raise your children by your values, not the values of bureaucrats who are trying to create a brave new world. I think every dollar you earn should be yours to spend, to save, to, to give away as you see fit. And I swear to you, if the libertarians take power, if I am elected president, we will restore the country that our founding fathers had in mind, and then we will. you give a good blowjob love you Harry Brown I love your Harry Brown I love you Harry Brown I love you Harry Brown 
Harry Brown did nothing and got 400,000 votes. Whoop de doo, whoop de doo, whoop de doo. Harry Brown, Harry Brown, Harry Brown. Yabba dabba doo, yabba dabba doo. Ya ooga, ooga, ooga. Ha 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 ha. Ooga, drooly, leaky, out of mouth. Me wanny Harry Brown. Harry Brown. Harry Brown? Harry Brown picked Joe Jorgensen as his VP pick? Huh? Bob Under the Table Barr is a federal prosecutor and foot inspector from Georgia. Despite being four foot two and looking like he's mentally undressing you from across the room, he raised over 163,000 big ones and managed to sneak his way onto the Fox News set. Bob Barr received some interesting notoriety when pro Fortnite player Nancy Pelosi alluded to Bob Barr being a, a communist spy. But the real fault was in his campaign. Bob's eyes was not that he didn't campaign enough because he was always stalking Pokemon from a distance. The fault of his campaign took place when Ron Paul endorsed the Constitution Party instead of the Libertarian Party. Bob Barr uh, only received 500,000 votes as a result of that. Hey, this is Jeff Lawrence from the Libertarian National Convention, standing against the machine as always. I'm here with Bob Barr. Uh, Luminary here also uh, was the Libertarian uh, presidential nominee uh, most recently. Bob, I appreciate you taking a second to chat with me. Can you tell the folks out there what's a Libertarian? A Libertarian first and foremost is an American, an American who believes and understands the founding of this country. A Libertarian today is an individual who believes that the political party, a political party, our political party needs to exist to maximize individual liberty and minimize government power which, in whatever area you're involved, is the essence of libertarianism. Hey, Bob, I really appreciate that. Again, this is Jeff Lawrence. Bob, congratulations. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. And this is Jeff Lawrence, Bob Barr, and we're out. Here we go. Here we fucking go. I am as hyped as all get out. Gary the fucking Johnson. Gary Stiffcock Johnson. Gary the Big Cock Johnson is an American businessman and author from New Mexico. B.
being their 29th governor. As a member of the Republican Party, Johnson can't stop hitting woes on the daily. As soon as Gare Bear announced his campaign via Twitter while he was taking a fat shit, he stood up, looked around, looked up and down at his masterpiece and said, this will be in the White House one day. So that's what he did. He started running Republican, but after the first debate, he looked down in his dick hole and wondered if he could fit an elephant in there. He figured he couldn't fit an elephant in his dick hole, but he might be able to manage a porcupine and switch teams. Which was class, because the, he, the nomination he received tripled the votes than uh, the other. Uh, whose name was Roger, or some shit. But there was one thing looming over the shadows. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. The Libertarian Party rides on Ron Paul's dick. And what he does truly determines the Libertarian outcome. But this time, Ron Paul was not running as a Libertarian, but as an Independent. This could take tens of thousands of votes from the Libertarian Party. And Gary knew this. But Paul failed and said he would vote for Gary. Gary received ballot access in all 49 states, fuck Alaska, and raised nearly 3 million shekels. But when it was all said and done, Johnson got 1% of the vote. 1.2 million. The first time the party ever got over a million votes. But oh shit, oh fuck, oh shit, oh fuck, Gary's back. But now, there was a wrench stuck in the primordial gears. Not only does Gary God Handsome 6.3 million William Weld on his team. The 2016 election had a few interesting characters. One loudmouth racist enabler who doesn't know how to do the job and a venomous, corrupt, foolish snake that stands for very little. And it seemed like this election could be the one where Gary can slither to the finish line. <sighs> Gary was on his way there. He didn't know what Aleppo was, but that didn't stop him. He received 4.5 million votes, 3.2% of the population. One upping his previous set record. Which, you know, kind of because people didn't like Trump or Hillary, but it was still impressive. Now that begs the question. Who's next? The 2020 Libertarian primary is coming to a close. So who will win? So we can really break down into who's running to four categories. The big three, the mid five, John McAfee, and then the rest. Starting off with the rest, we have Kim Ruff, the vice chair of the LP Radical Caucus and former mine inspector. Max Abramson, New Hampshire State Representative and Back to the Future fangirl. Lynn Kofefi Kofefi Governor of Rhode Island and Pornhub commentator. Mark Whitney, podcaster and funny man. Ken Armstrong, someone who's missing more in his life than just his testicles. Justin Amash, some guy from Michigan. My homie Kemeth... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> my, my homie Kenneth Blevins, <laughs> Ninja's uncle, <laughs> who is a pipe welder. <laughs> Arvin uh, Vora. Vice Chair of the uh, LNC and uh, best player in his League of Legends team, <laughs> Kenneth Dunham, Jeff Dunham's retarded cousin who wrote these. Oh, wait. It was me, Eric Gernhard. You could mix the letters in his name to, <laughs> to make Dick get harder. <laughs> and finally, Sarah Fats, Florida Man. John McAfee is the founder and CEO of McAfee Inc. and is a crazy motherfucker. Besides providing annoying virus protection, John McAfee 
doesn't provide any taxes to the federal government, which has led him to flee to Belize, where he was arrested for fucking murder. After faking a heart attack to escape the police, he was brought to a hospital. He, he escaped the hospital by jumping from a window and ended up in Honduras, where he was arrested by the police, and he was going to be deported back to Belize, but proved he was an American citizen and was sent to America instead, where he was pursued by the IRS. McAfee resides in the United Kingdom, on the run from both the Belizean government and the U.S. government but still declared and ran his 2020 presidential campaign. What a fucking gangster. Now for the mid five. Sam Robb is a fat man, also a former Navy officer. Dan Berman is an internet personality and podcaster who wears big funny no tax hat. Adam Kokish is an anti-war political activist. Jim Gary is a judge in Orange County Supreme Court and worse than previous Gary's John Mons has a big cock that's it vermin supreme supreme vermin it the name spreads terror in the eyes of people from every direction that they look from those eyes in vermin supreme is a political satirist dressed in a leather boot atop his head and has been in some wild shenanigans. He runs on a mandatory toothbrushing, free ponies for all, a step up from Medicare for all if you ask me, has been running for president since 1992 and plans to do it to the day he dies. He's truly one of the most enjoyable characters out there. Thing. Um, uh, uh, Jesus told me to uh, make Granitary Day. Jacob Horny Hornberger is the founder of the Future Freedom Foundation, and he loves loves premarital sex loves it loves it loves it mmm good but uh sadly none of these guys won you know who did win a friend of my boy Harry Brown his VP pick actually Joe Jorgensen has worked with the Libertarian Party for so long and has been a vice president pick a few times and now has been declared the libertarian nominee round of applause round of applause frankly joe was one of the best choices she is like the establishment of the anti-establishment not a bad choice but next time pick vermin i just want to know what that society is like wow that's some real crazy shit but I got a secret for y'all motherfuckers. It ain't over. Fifty more years. Seventy more years. Eighty more years. But in conclusion, I have one final statement. Fuck bitches. Get money. Thanks for watching.